For this video, I'm going to teach you how to add and subtract mixed numbers. To do math with mixed numbers, it is easiest to convert to an arithmetic problem. You'll see what I mean by this shortly. Using some basic arithmetic, we can actually turn two mixed numbers into one mixed number. And your answer will already be mixed, so when you have your answer, you want to leave it as a mixed number. I'll start us off with something very easy. Let's say we have 3 and 4 elevenths plus 5 and 2 elevenths. All you have to do is arrange one on top of the other, so 3 and 4 elevenths plus 5 and 2 elevenths. And if you do that, simply add the whole parts and the fraction parts. So 3 plus 5 is 8, 4 elevenths plus 2 elevenths is 6 elevenths, and that's actually the whole problem. You're done. For example 1 in your book, this one works on the same idea, except we're going to need to find a common denominator before we actually put these together. So we have 7 and 2 fifths, or I'm sorry, 5 and 2 fifths plus 7 and 3 tenths. We want both of these to have a common denominator, so I can just multiply the top and the bottom of this one up top by 2, and then this will become 5 and 4 fifths, or I'm sorry, 4 tenths, plus 7 and 3 tenths. And then all that remains is to add these two things together, and in so doing, 5 plus 7 is 12, 4 tenths plus 3 tenths is 7 tenths. And we can see that you're actually done in just a couple very easy steps. Example 2 is a little harder. Now for example 2, we're going to do subtraction instead. I'll clear out some space here so we can do the subtraction. And so when we do subtraction, you want to make sure the bigger number is always on top. In this case, 6 and 4 ninths minus 2 and 1 third. So we have that. Again, we need to find a common denominator. So I'll multiply the top and the bottom here by 3. And if I do that, I'm going to have 6 and 4 ninths minus 2 and 3 ninths. And again, we just subtract in turn. So 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 ninths minus 3 ninths is 1 ninth. And that's actually it. Now, there are some more difficult variations that can come along. So let's talk about what happens when those things pop up. The first of these things is called carrying. And it's very, very similar to the carrying that you would do when you would do arithmetic with addition, when you would add two things together. Let's say we have 5 and 1 half plus, we'll say, 4 and 2 thirds. Yet again, we need to find a common denominator here. I'll multiply the top and the bottom of this by 3, multiply the top and the bottom of this by 2, and if I do that, I'm going to have 5 and 3 over 6 plus 4 and 4 over 6. Now if I put these together, something happens that's a little strange. We get 9 and 7 out of 6. The problem is, this isn't technically a mixed number, because if you look at 7 over 6, that's bigger than 1. So here's how we're going to adjust for that. We're going to subtract the denominator, 7 minus 6 is 1, and add to the whole part. And so it actually turns out this is 10 and 7 I'm sorry, 10 and 1 sixth. So you can see, even with carrying, this still isn't very hard. It just takes a little practice. Let's try this again with another example. Let's say we have 6 and we'll say 9 fourteenths plus 1 and 5 sevenths. 6 and 9 fourteenths plus 1 and 5 sevenths. Once again, we'll find a common denominator here. So I'll multiply these by 2, and if I do that, I'm going to get 6 and 9 fourteenths plus 1 and 10 fourteenths. And if I put these together, we'll see 6 plus 1 is 7. Of course, 9 plus 10 is 19. So we'll get 7 and 19 fourteenths. And we're just going to do the same thing here. I'll subtract the denominator, so we'll get 5. And I'll add 1 here, we'll get 8. And this will actually come out to 8 and 5 fourteenths.
So that takes care of that. Another variation that you're going to need to watch out for is something called borrowing. And borrowing is a lot like carrying, where we have to manipulate things slightly to make them work out the way we want. So to borrow, and again, this is very similar to what you would do when you would do subtraction by hand. So let's take a look at an example of this. Let's say we have, I'll say, 3 and 1 sixth minus 1 and 1 half. 3 and 1 sixth minus 1 and 1 half. Once again, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this by 3. And so here we'll get 3 and 1 sixth minus 1 and 3 over 6. Just like that. Well, we see here that we have too many sixths that we're subtracting. We got one here, we have three there. We can't just put negative two on the bottom. This is involving positive numbers and that will mess everything up. So instead, I'm going to do the opposite of what we did with carrying. I'm going to add the numerator and get seven and subtract one here and get two. So this will actually be two and seven sixths minus one and three over six. And now it gets very easy. Now we just do what we had been doing. 2 minus 1 is, of course, 1. 7 minus 3 is, of course, 4. So I get 1 and 4 sixths, which reduces to 1 and 2 thirds. And so we see that even with borrowing, borrowing isn't very hard as long as you know what you are doing. Let's try one more of these. So I'll say, let's say we have 9 and 1 ninth minus six and one-third. Yet again, we'll find a common denominator. I'll multiply the top and the bottom of this by three. Nine and one-ninth minus six and three-ninths. Again, we have too many ninths here, so I'm going to borrow. I'll subtract one here and add the denominator and get 10 here. We will now have eight and 10 ninths. And from that, we will subtract 6 and 3 ninths. Well, 8 minus 6 is 2. 10 minus 3 is 7. And we get 2 and 7 ninths. And there you go. One last little note that can come back to haunt you if you don't master it now. You want to always... put the bigger number on top. when you subtract. Let's say we have a problem like negative 5 and we'll say 7 over 11 plus 3 and 1 over 11. Now in this case, it actually turns out that negative 5 and 7 11 is further from 0. So for the purposes of what I'm talking about here, we'll consider that bigger. So what I'm going to do is treat this as a subtraction problem, but because I know that this is bigger, we'll ultimately get a negative number when we finish. So I'm going to actually reverse the signs here and then put a negative in front when we finish. So we'll have 5 and 7 over 11 minus 3 and 1 over 11. Well, by this point, that should be very easy for you, based on what we've seen. 5 minus 3 is, of course, 2. 7 minus 1 is, of course, 6. So we get 2 and 6 elevenths. And so our answer here is the negative of that, negative 2 and 6 elevenths. So these are just some little things to watch out for as you do this. You'll want to practice this a bit yourself, but I think with a little practice, you'll surprise yourself at how easy this actually is. So take a look at that, and good luck.